Hello there, welcome to the first real homework video that you all will be doing for Mr. Schwartz's math class. Today's homework is on Polya's method, and if you're watching this the day it was assigned, then it is August 26, 2015, so please put those at the top and proceed with me to the next page. Polya's method, what is it? Actually, who is it? George Polya, this is him right here looking very mathematician-y because he was a mathematician. He lived from 1887 to 1985. And what we're going to talk about is the fact that he developed four basic steps in problem solving. So before we talk about what Polya's four basic steps in problem solving are, I want you to take a guess, or even just to say, what are your steps in problem solving? So please have the notes on this page, and also say, whenever you're going to solve a problem, what are the four things that you do as you work through that problem? After you have that listed, then proceed with us to the next page. And you'll see that Polya's steps were number one, to understand the problem. Part of understanding the problem is to recognize, what is it that I'm asking? What, what am I trying to solve here? What will a solution look like? We usually find that by looking at the end of a word problem and seeing where the question is. The second step, he said, is to develop a plan. Sometimes that takes the form of an expression to solve the problem. You'll, you'll use a mathematical expression or equation. Sometimes you might want to use a table and you'll fill in values to find the missing value. And that will be how you reach a solution. And another example, a third example of a plan might be to do guess and check. And if you're guessing and checking, then you might, uh, that might be a plan for how to find a solution. Not quite my favorite, but it is one kind of plan. Third, after you developed a plan, you always have to carry out that plan. You have to actually do the calculation, fill in the table, or start guessing and checking and figure out if you can find the answer. And finally, after finding an answer, you need to look back or review and say, does my answer make sense? They were asking for the number of hours that people sleep each night, and I got an answer of 57 hot dogs. That doesn't quite make sense. You probably ran into a little hiccup or a roadblock along the way, and so that's why it's a good thing that you just reviewed. So once you have those notes, proceed with me to the first example. This is the next section. And in this example, we're going to read together that Johan wants to buy a new guitar that costs $180. Every time he mows a lawn, he earns $20. If he has already mowed three lawns, how many more lawns will Johan have to mow to buy the guitar? So you can see that I've broken this up, and I've listed the separate steps that uh, make up Polya's method. You can see the first is understand the question. We're wondering, what is it here that we're doing? What are we trying to figure out? And it's how many lawns, how many more lawns will Johan have to mow? So we know that our answer is going to be a number of lawns. The second is to develop a plan. Here I'm giving you two examples of two different types of plans or processes that you might, processes that you might use to solve this problem. One would be an equation and another might be a table. If you go the equation route, you need to carry out the plan. To do that, we might write an equation like $180 equals $20 times the number of lawns. So he's going to get $20 for each lawn, but we need that total to be equal to 180. To solve this, we'll divide both sides by 20, and then we'll get the total number of lawns is 9. Now we need to remember the question, and he's already mowed three, so nine lawns total minus the three he's already done. He needs six lawns more. If you're drawing a table, you might split it into two separate rows, and the top will tell you how many lawns you've, he's mowed, and the bottom will tell you how many total dollars he's earned. So if he mows one lawn, that's $20. Once he mows two lawns, that's another $20 for a total of $40. And you could fill in the entire table until you found out that nine lawns would get you $180. Again, it's important to understand the question and understand that if he's already mowed three lawns and he needs nine total, that's six lawns more he needs to mow. The final step is to look at number four, which is look back and make sure our answer makes sense. So in this case, I checked it and I said, if he does get $20 per lawn and he mows nine total, will that equal 180? And it will equal $180. I also realized that my answer is a number of lawns, and that's exactly what they're asking for. So we followed Polya's method, and we've labeled each step of the process. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do on your own as you look at this practice problem. I'll read it with you really quickly. It says, every year about 40 new students enter St. Pius X. St. Pius X has a total of 
8,615 students lifetime. That's how many that students we've had, including this year. And the question is, how many students will have been taught at St. Pius in three years? So three years from today, what will this number grow to, this 8,615, if we get about 40 new students each year? So I want you to solve this. I want you to develop a plan. I want you to understand the question first, then develop a plan, carry out the plan, and check your answer. And show me with a 1, 2, 3, and 4 that you're doing each of those steps, please. Thank you so much. I'll see you in class.